Uh, Chris. Thank you. So yeah, Chris Meitinger. I'm here with Security Scorecard. I was out at a PwC event yesterday that we won. i am myself been in security about 15 years. 10 of those living in Germany. Been to every CCC since I don't want to admit how long. I think 21 C3. I, but that's actually my first time speaking at a uh, hacker event. So this is kind of, a, kind of cool. I'm going to go through what we do slightly differently than I did yesterday for uh, PwC. But I will give you a quick background who we are. I, Security Scorecard, we're a startup founded in 2013 by Alex Sampolsky and Sam Kasima. They were the CISO and head of compliance at Guilt Group, if any of you are familiar, an online retailer. I'm funded by Sequoia GV. Uh, the vision, sort of the problem that we're looking at and trying to solve is can we instantly and non-intrusively measure overall security risk for any company in the world? I'm, and the primary use case is third-party risk management, vendor, supplier risk. I'm sure most of you in the room are familiar with, say, the target hack that happened via a third-party air conditioner or air conditioning service company. That's the type of risk that we're looking at. I work with a number of different global companies. So I got a few up here. I'm primarily in the United States, a lot of financial services, a lot of healthcare. But I want to jump right into some more technical stuff. So we, the way we see the world is that you know a lot of third a lot of breaches, in particular you know data disclosure breaches, are resulting from third parties. In fact, at this point, most large companies have good enough security controls, security programs that they're not getting hacked nearly as much through their own stuff as much as through their third parties. Uh, the way we look at the world, you know, vendor risk management controls often fail in providing visibility into the third party ecosystem. For those of you that work at vendors, perhaps provide cloud services, I'm sure you've all gone through the Excel spreadsheet questionnaire, do you change your passwords very often, do you patch your systems, that entire you know, SIG, SIG Lite, ISO, PCI, whatever you go through. That's always fundamentally a point in time assessment. The auditor or the um, customer says yes, we believe that on January 1st, 2016, you are secure. Now we have no idea about January 30th or February 28th or moving down you know, through time because these third party risk assessments are typically always point in time. They're limited and they're subjective. They, essentially as a company, as a large enterprise, you're believing your suppliers when they tell you that they really do patch all the time and they really do close security vulnerabilities. The approach we've taken to solving this problem, uh, I got a couple of screenshots from our platform up here. Uh, and I'll, run, I'll run through sort of how, the, actually I'm gonna skip to it, use a different slide for this. Um, the approach that we've taken to this problem is what I've got up here. So essentially we start at the bottom collecting data. So we have various different data feeds, our, sink, our own sinkholes, our honeypots. We look at all of IP4 space, look at every TLS server on the internet, look at the encryption settings for every TLS server on the internet look at every certificate, look at you know, malware, C2 calling home, scrape GitHub for API keys that have been mistakenly placed there, you scrape pastebin for passwords, et cetera, um, and put it all in a big data store. That's what we call threat market, and I'll demo threat market for just a second in a minute. Um, in a separate process, we attribute the entire um, internet to who, which companies run that IP space. So we, uh, we look at, um, obviously, registry data, Aaron, Ripe, you know, who is type stuff, BGP, uh, passive DNS, I look at certificates, you know, where, where the CNs point back to. In order to create a footprint for pretty much any company, currently monitor about 100,000 companies. I'm, although I, that's just typically, you know, the ones we've started looking at or some customers started looking at, we can automatically begin monitoring new companies pretty much at any time because we have this backend data. I break that up into, I've got these grades per risk factor, break the different finding types up into different risk factors, and then weight companies against each other. We're not out saying you have exactly six, not five, not seven vulnerabilities. We're saying of the types of data we can observe, looking at your TLS settings, looking at the open ports on your network, looking at the malware that we see calling home from your network, how, are, how secure is one company comparatively to another, and put that in essentially uh, you know, what are American school grades, A through F, uh, in Germany be one through six, I'm not sure what it is here. 
I, in order to give vendor risk managers a fairly easy comparison I'm, in order to understand how secure one company is versus another. And that boils into the platform. So I've got the names obscured to protect the guilty uh, of which companies these are. But essentially, there's a portfolio of companies, each with a different security rating, each of which is broken down if, if you click into the company into those uh, 10 factors. And then I've got the second view, the bottom right here, of the overall portfolio grades. And so you can see, of all of my vendors, which companies have which types of security issues, what's the most common issue, which companies have been, have been decreasing, so which companies have gone from you know, a high to a low grade in the last seven days, that might indicate that a breach is imminent, or it might indicate that they just quit funding their security team, or fired them all, uh, and aren't patching, in which case, as a large enterprise, you may want to rethink your relationship to that company. I'm, so I will hop in just for a second because this is a technical conference and this takes a minute for this to flip I, into some of the back end data just to show you sort of what we've got. Because the one use case is pure vendor risk I, and that's the sort of front end I was showing you here. The other use case for this back end threat market data is I'm, penetration testing, auditing, you were talking to uh, Price Waterhouse yesterday, you know, a lot of the stuff that we have in this store just available at any time is sort of the first early steps of a pen test or, you know, the scoping, discovery, reconnaissance uh, for an audit, pen test, whatever. I'm, and so we, we, we built this big data store, we just have all this data. I'm, don't log on to these accounts, I'm, if you would. I, or, I don't know, who cares. I'm, Two minutes, perfect. Just couple, another couple examples. I just coming up. Just three minutes ago, I just hit uh, post.lu into the banner grabs. We maintain a store of banner grabs from across the internet. Um, so we've got you know various different Apache types and GINX, uh, different data, different ports. We can search all of this by whatever port. I didn't look if there's any. Let's do port 23 at Oracle. And so this is this is leveraging the fact that we've attributed. Uh, different parts of the internet to different companies and so we can go very quickly and figure out uh, where does Oracle have Telnet running, a semantic Raptor firewall, wow does that thing even get updates anymore? Um, all right, and so this is the type of data that you know, it can be used, it feeds the actual product but it can equally well be used for auditing, pen testing, lots of different ethical stuff. Um, so another example, just looking at uh, leak passwords, we scrape uh, paste bin, number of different leak sites in order to find uh, password dumps and we save those and then again we attribute them versus the, uh, versus the company in order to arrive at scorecards like this one. So this is, I'm not going to be able to go in a lot of depth, but this is the current Cisco scorecard. Uh, we got a 76%. And we've had in the last 90 days discovered two different passwords that are at risk, bubble this up. Again, we're not saying that Cisco is good or bad for having two passwords leaked. We're making a comparative assessment. How many Cisco passwords are out there versus Juniper versus Palo Alto, whatever else? Thank you very much.